Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Uh, We're coming at you on June 5th, and as always, tons of news going on nowadays. Um, But before we get into that, uh, I'd like to introduce our our group here. So up in the left-hand corner, we have our Screaming Eagle of Freedom, Tim Everett, who is a pilot from the state of California. And up in the right-hand corner there, we have uh, Leon, the word, Brath White. And uh, <laughs> the last word on everything on this show. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Leon is a retired engineer from the state of California. And mm-hmm. Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. Uh, before we get into the show, I just wanted to let you know, if you're following along live, that uh, you, you can leave a comment on the email uh, for the show, I believe it's Libertarian Counterpoint. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, uh, where, wherever you're uh, looking at this from, there should be an email link there. And then uh, as well, if you also have any stories of how the uh, COVID or the riots have impacted your business uh, or your job, uh, we'd certainly love to hear about it and uh, maybe even interview you on the air. So you could send that too, and we'll uh, certainly take a look at it. Uh, but getting into the business today, uh, most recently with all the uh, uh, news on the riots, uh, Trump recently had made a threat to send out the, uh, the mi- or to call in the military domestically to help quell the riots uh, if governors didn't uh, call up the National Guard. Since then, he's sort of pulled back a little bit, but um, but uh, clearly that is a uh, huge. Uh, a, a huge item, especially for libertarians. Uh, either you guys have any uh, thoughts on that? I think it's always a matter of concern when the president calls out the military, whether it would be the National Guard, to do the work of the police service. I have a real problem with this. However, calling out the National Guard by the president is not unprecedented here in the United States. I don't know if you guys would remember, but Eisenhower won't call on the National Guard to integrate uh, Central High School in, in Arkansas during the times of Jim Crow and that kind of stuff. It, it was actually at the tail end of Jim Crow. But um, Governor Forbes, I believe it was, was not allowing the um, black students to attend, to attend the school. And Eisenhower used the National Guard to, to achieve that purpose. So, but Trump is on legal, well, on legal ground, he is, he is, he is there. Uh, I think he's on firm ground. But I have a problem with it because I do not want the military doing police, police, police work. But right now, these governors and mayors, Bill Bellagio uh, comes to mind, is really doing a disservice to the citizens and the constituents they are supposed to serve. So I think the president will probably have to do something if these people don't step up and stop these riots. I mean. Peaceful protest is a constitutional right, and we should we should protest whenever we believe there's injustice. But I think we have to draw, we must draw a clear distinction between seeking justice for George Floyd, which we, we should do, versus this criminal activity with the looting, the arson, and all of the mayhem that is going on in some of these major cities. I think a clear distinction must be drawn between those two activities. Yeah, well, it certainly seems like the if if anything, even from a, a libertarian point of view, uh, if there is any role for government, most certainly that is protecting uh, people from from the harm of others. And so, exactly. certainly, this this uh, issue with the rioters is is uh, certainly an offense to some. You know, as as uh, the people who are being victimized, their shops burned. Uh, you know, some people, uh, we've seen some horrific beatings out there as well, uh, including, you know, even police. I saw a video not long ago of a policeman being run over by a car in the riots. Yes. Yes. So there's uh, there's quite a bit of violence going on. Um, and certainly this is a concern. In fact, here in Sacramento, uh, we recently, uh, about two days ago, I think we had the national, about 500 National Guardsmen were deployed in our downtown area. Right. And it seems like a lot of the looting has since stopped, or at sure, least as far sure. as I've heard. Uh-huh. No, about, about the violence, I mean, this violence is unbelievable. I mean, a uh, uh, police officer was killing Oakland. 
Another one was killed, um, well, uh, he was an ex-captain, was killed in, in St. Louis. And there have been other cases in, in, in New York City. I mean, this cannot continue. It yeah. definitely cannot continue. I know from the, uh, from the libertarian, uh, it seems like a party's perspective, I, I believe uh, Joe Jorgensen, the LP candidate, her view is uh, a little bit more reserved than uh, what Trump is talking about. It's, uh, I, you know, it, willing to deploy, I believe, as long as the governor requests the uh, deployment of the military, yeah. but not, yeah. not regardless of whether <laughs> the governor, uh, you know, which is sort of what Trump's saying, you know, in his, but I, you know, that hasn't happened yet. It's just been threatened. So well, I know it's been threatened, but, but in, um, in the case of, in the case of, uh, I'm t I say this is not unprecedented, um, Forbes did not request it when Eisenhower called up the National Guard to to to, um, to allow the the black students to attend Central High School in Arkansas. Yeah. So even if Trump did that, he will still be on firm legal ground to do it, constitutional ground to do it. Even though I would prefer that I would prefer he not do it because I do not want military types doing the work that Polish should be doing. Yeah. And it certainly had it, it, one thing too. I, sorry, Tim. Did you want to say something? Oh, yeah, I'm just agreeing. Uh, I'm listening. I'm still not done with it, but there, on Cato is a, uh, a recent uh, analysis of uh, the, the law that allows for uh, this uh, calling out of, uh, of the military uh, called the Insurrection Act. And yes. Leon's correct. That was one of the examples that they gave, the, the issue with Governor Wallace and... The other one was the, um, the, I believe it was the Rodney King riots. They they brought out that, yes, that's that true. situation. Yes, yeah. right. in the early 90s, yes. Yeah, so it's very rare, and, and it should be used. Uh, it's designed, of course, uh, to be used on a, uh, a last resort basis. And I don't think we've exhausted the last resorts yet. Uh, because, you know, we have this National Guard and, you know, that's that's controlled by the states. And so, you know, if, if individual states are uh, having these issues, then you, you need to give them a chance to deal with it in, in their own way. And that includes the local uh, police, the state police, and then the National Guard. And, uh, you know, and as far as that goes... The militia of the United States and the several states, which would include the organized as well as the unorganized militias, which is the one everybody's between 17 and 55 is a part of, and, and their job is to uh, repel invasions and quell insurrections and, and everyone, all, all the above. So, I mean, we have numerous layers of... Uh, of defense against insurrections, which, which it's, it's starting to, to seem like that's what's going on. And, and without being able to name names or, or accuse anyone myself, because I haven't seen yet any real positive proof from where this, this organization seems to be coming from, but these riots are showing, uh, certain levels of uh, things totally unrelated to uh, to the victim that started, you know, the, the victimization uh, of, right. uh, of uh, George, right? Yeah. George, George Floyd. George Floyd. Yes. Yeah. George Floyd. So, um, yeah, the uh, so these layers uh, need to be exhausted and then they they uh, they can always, like Leon said, they can be called up by, by the individual um, governors and they, they can, you know, hey, we're, we're, we need help out here. So, so there can be those situations, but uh, I don't think we're there yet. That's all I have to say. Well, I think, uh, I think we've kind of, uh, you know, we exhausted that topic quite a bit. Uh, could I, uh, could I make, could I make oh, yeah. one statement, Jason? Sure. On, on, on the last show, I made a mistake, and I want I want to correct it. Um, we were talking about what what charges the police officers should face, and I and we were talking about whether they should face our first um, first degree murder charges, and I said that the state will have to prove um, intent. What I meant is it was premeditative intent. 
yeah. not just plain old intent because premeditation is a big part of first degree first degree murder charges i think tim and i was was uh, had a little discussion on that on the last show i just wanted to correct that well you know and, and i guess you know that brings up a good point too that uh um is is recently in the news as well and that's the charges that have recently been filed right. and they've been upgraded i believe to second degree murder secondary murder uh, yes yes, yes. And, and i'm not sure if that's for all the cops or just for the one who had his knee on on uh, mr floyd's neck well, but the, uh I, I know they've all been charged though and yes. uh all been charged with at least manslaughter and maybe up to second degree the the, the key issue is though is is this something that is is being politically driven because if it seems to me that it, it might be very hard to be able to say that this is murder versus manslaughter and if you go for murder and you know all that entails and then you can't prove it in court then we could be looking at a, a you know potentially more rioting coming in the future if people feel like they've gotten no justice whereas you know at least if a guy is charged with manslaughter and he's convicted then you know there's at least a clear signal that the justice system's working. So, well, well, yeah. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I agree that this was not murder. Okay, now I I don't believe it was first degree murder unless we have uh, more information. But yeah. this this show sure like hell looks like second degree murder to me, because we have a cop, right, on a man's neck for eight yeah. minutes and 43 seconds. That man intended to kill that guy. I can't see how we could get away from that. You know, I, that, that's something where I definitely want to, to hear the other side's case in a court of law. At this point, we've only heard it tried in one direction. And, yeah. you know, and, and certainly it seems like the guy did something wrong and the guy should probably go to jail. Yeah. But the question is, is, did he actually commit murder or did he just have gross negligence in his job, bad policing, you know, and, and that's, you know, I, I, I don't know. And that's where, you know, I think that's the beauty of our justice system is that we allow both sides to have their, their day in court. And so I, you know, I mean, I, I could certainly see, uh, you know, there being, if, if we, we're probably not privy to all the evidence as well and potentially the, the prosecutors know that there's enough evidence to get them on this so you know uh you know maybe it's not just a political decision but at least from the outside it's hard to know and, and it does worry me a little bit if they go for a charge that they you know sounds yeah, better yeah, yeah right. but they, they can't prove it and that, that's that's the only that's the big worry i would have in this um, well i don't know i don't i'm sorry i sorry tim uh, tim go ahead i'm sorry i uh, just gonna say he historically he should have that worry because historically uh in many cases again this is this is stuff i've we've probably all been following but uh police uh do something similar to this somebody dies the suspect in their custody or that they're trying to get into custody dies and they are fired they're tried, they are uh, found not guilty, and they uh, are re their jobs are reinstated, and they have the power of their police unions and their police unions attorneys that are working diligently to get them yeah. off, and they have yeah. friends in the in the prosecute prosecutor's office, and the they meaning the police unions and the police departments. And so, you know, yeah, I'd be a little bit worried if they go for the jugular and miss entirely be and sure. on purpose, point. potentially, yeah. potentially yeah. on purpose. Yeah. So, uh, and you know, the, the one example that comes to mind is the guy that had, uh, the suspect, he was constantly yelling. He had his, his the cop had his AR-15 trained on this white guy crawling across a uh, hotel room toward him, and he kept yelling at him. And he he yelled in so many different commands. Words, yeah, commands. <laughs> yeah. Eventually, yeah. And, and of course, it was written on his rifle. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was one of those things that if you write that on your AR-15 and you use that to defend yourself, for example, it's not going to help you in court. 
But if you're a cop, in spite of that, if you're a cop and you shoot the guy, kill him after he's tried to comply with your ridiculous orders, you will be fired. You will be tried. You will be exonerated and you will be rehired back. I don't think he he may not have been rehired, but he was he was um, able to be maybe he was hired by another department. I don't know. But but uh, anyway, the point is, this is how it's been working. And it's, and again, people that are of liberal persuasion love their unions. Their unions are their uh, little their bread and butter. Their bread and butter, their little, you know, golden child. And they will bend over backwards for those unions. Well, then at the same time, they go, oh, well, we have all this police brutality. And they don't put two and two together yeah so you know so so this is this is the issue that uh i'm afraid we're gonna potentially see here uh so five years from now uh all four or five of those guys were fired all tried convicted all found innocent and all back on the streets as cops in minneapolis and all yeah and the liberals I go, oh, well, I, you know, I guess it's okay. They were union members. Must yeah. make it all, it's okay now. Well, anyway, this is this is it. actually one of the things that concerns me as well because the charges against the other three officers that didn't have the knee on the neck, the, the question is how culpable are they? It sounds like he was their training officer, the guy with the knee on the neck, you know, was the, oh, the actual training okay. officer. Well, and then it's not watch, though. Oh, okay, well, yeah. okay watch. here's... Okay, here's here's the pilot in me coming in. Okay, so so you're flying in a plane and you're captain and you're first officer, right? Okay, so your captain uh, is is uh, starting his approach and he he uh, he doesn't tell you to bring the gear down. And so what are you supposed to do? Well, let's just <laughs> captain doesn't want the gear down. Let's just go ahead and land, right? Is that, that what you're point. supposed to do? Yes. No. So they they in my that's not an excuse. I don't care who he is. If you see something wrong going on, you yes. need to step in. Okay. Sure. I don't care. You know, that's that's the same old excuse as well, we were just following orders in the Nazi regime. So we just Thank lined you. them up and mowed them down. So Thank you. Yes, I, Thank I, you. Yeah. But, but Tim, and, I think- and you know there, there's something else here too, eh? There's something else here too. The police is out there to protect and serve. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if they see one of their brothers, one of their blue brothers, doing something like this man was doing for eight minutes and 43 seconds and do nothing about it, they're not protecting and serving. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, I, it, I, I, so I'm I, sorry, well, I, I guess what I was going to jump in at is, it, and I haven't seen uh, the video showing what the other men are doing. I have seen part of the video where the guy has his knee on his neck. But if those other guys were performing other tasks, I mean, we're assuming they were all just standing there staring at him with his knee. They weren't. They were just standing and looking at what was going on. Yeah, if if they were just standing standing there looking. There's a video online. You can look at this. Okay. And I would completely agree with you if they're all standing there. If they're all performing other police functions while this is going on. And that's, that's what would concern me if they charge them with manslaughter and then they can show that they were actually engaged in other things and they assume the other guy can do his job, you know, then that, that can potentially cause a problem as well. So, cause you still have to be able to prove that the guy was negligent uh, sure. for the other officers. So, um, but and, what I want to, what, what I want to see, I'm sorry, Jason, are you done? No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh. Now all of these officers, the four of them, they all were supposed to have video cans on their shoulders. Ah. I want to find out if those video cards were, were turned on. Because yeah. if they were turned on, we can see exactly what was going on. Yeah. But if they were all turned off, if they were all turned off, then I want all of those officers charged with first degree murder because that was a conspiracy. Yeah. Yeah. There yeah. certainly it seems like if we have video cameras and for some reason they're not using them or, you know, convenient defects happen with the video <laughs> after the fact, then <laughs> Then these, uh, they, then certainly that it seems to me that the the onus is on the police at that point. So yeah. let me let me add one other thing. Tim raised a very good point about the uh, the issue about the unions. 
You know, there's a very good example, a well-known example that happened in New York City. I don't know if you remember the Eric Gardner case. Oh, yeah. But Pantalone, that was the officer's name, I don't remember his first name, put him in an illegal chokehold. And, and he was saying, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. He said that for a few minutes, and the guy ended up dying. Pantalone was never prosecuted, but it took them five years before they could fire him. Mm -hmm. Listen to what I'm saying. The man was yeah. not prosecuted, but it took them five years to fire him. But you know why that happened? Because of the unions. Union. Yeah. Because of the unions. Five years to fire him. We have this on video. This man is using an illegal chokehold on a citizen. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't fire the man. It took him five years to do it. Yeah. Unions. What? Yeah, one of the presidents, Rockefeller, wrote a very nice letter of warning us about having unions in, get involved in public jobs. Yes. And uh, it was very prescient and very correct. It, it's, sure. Unions are not, uh, not meant for the public domain, in other words. Exactly. You know, that, that's, that's something uh, completely... Um, and for his reasons that he outlined many, many years ago, prior to all this unionization of all these uh, these government jobs, and so now we have a, a teachers' union and a firemen's union, and it, you yeah. know, and it's it's done everything he warned everybody about. It was it's a short letter; you it's, it's online, you can read it. But anyway, very good point. Yeah. Very good point. We were uh, warned. There are public employee unions all over the place. Just well. Jason, I don't know if Jason was a mem is a member of the union, but I was forced to pay for 28 and a half years. I was I was paying a public employee union money that I refuse that I did not want to pay for 28 and a half years until the Janice decision came out from the Supreme Court. I find that such a violation of my rights. You would not believe. Yeah, you know, it was uh, until just recently that that uh, Supreme Court decision that allowed us to opt out. And yes. so uh, uh, prior to that, uh, at least, uh, you know, in working in uh, state government, uh, you could opt out of a very small portion of the fee uh, of your union dues, which was just to uh, supposedly uh, it's somewhere around 10 percent, I think, Leon, you know, that you could opt out of that yeah. they considered for your uh, political, their political speech or whatever. But then the rest was all called the fair share that you had to pay for the representation of the union. So. Uh, but uh, but that's been overturned, and now we're actually seeing a lot of people, uh, you know, bail from these unions. So yeah. that that's yeah. actually going to be interesting to see how these unions do in the long term. Um, you know, perhaps oh, yeah, the so unions. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Did I, did I cut you off? I'm sorry. Well, I was just yeah. going to say, perhaps this uh, Supreme Court decision will uh, erode the power of these, uh, you know, police unions as well. So you know, maybe that will, you know, take a bite into this problem. Oh. Well, I, I sure hope so, eh? but, but even there are some states right now actively trying to get around the Janice decision. They're actively trying to do this. To do this. Hmm. They're trying hmm. to still make us for pay um, pay union dues. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm retired, so I don't have that to worry about, but, um, but they're still trying to do it. Yeah. It's uh, an, an interesting side note. Uh, here in Sacramento, we, we actually have somebody running for uh, an assembly district who is uh, written a, uh, a James Just, who is part of our uh, libertarian group here. And he uh, has uh, written a letter to the unions uh, trying to ask them to be part of the solution and to help uh, in identifying these problem cops so that we can, you know, that they can actually be part of the solution instead of part of the problem, which is what sure. we're sort of identifying. I'm, I'm all for that. I'm all yeah. for that. So, um, and you can, of course, uh, support James Just by uh, looking him up on the web. And uh, uh, I'm sure he'd love your support yes. out there if you happen to be in Assembly District 7. <laughs> so, so, you know, you, you know one, of the, one of the things, one of the things that, um, that I think is important, I would hope out of this, we have some reforms. Uh, and one of the reforms has to be, there must be some mechanism that, whereby we can weed out some of the bad apples within the police service because they do have bad apples okay i mean in every every profession has them okay so we have we have to find some way to weed out the bad apples and the other thing too and we were just talking about the investigation of these crimes tim you raised that point i think we have to go to some sort of um independent panel or some independent something 
because the district attorney in all of these jurisdictions has some sort of ancestral relationship with the police. I mean, that's fine when you're investigating normal crime, but it's not fine when you have to investigate one of the people who normally work with you to try to prosecute crimes. So we need to have some sort of independent something to investigate him when we have complaints against police officers. As a matter of fact, this guy who did this, the one who was putting his knee on George Floyd's neck, I think he had 30, 40 complaints against him in the Minnesota, in the, Minis in the Minneapolis Police Department. And he was still on the force. He was still yeah. there doing his thing. And now look at, the, look at the end result of this. So we have to have some mechanism to weed out and some mechanism by which we can have independent investigation whenever there are complaints against the police service. Yeah. Tim, Tim I hope I'm not dominating this thing too much. My apologies. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, thank you, Word. Word. Yeah, thank you, Word. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, I, I think that they need to look at uh, uh, qualified immunity laws as well. I, I know the Supreme Court's looking at it now. I don't know what's going to become of it, but uh, right. qualified immunity, especially as it applies to the police department, um, potentially how it applies to political people as well, but. Uh, you know, unless unless these kinds of motivations are taken away uh, for people to do bad with with no uh, no ramifications involved uh, in the law, I mean, it's baked in. If there's anything systemic, you can argue if there's systemic racism, but you cannot argue that there is no systemic motivation for people to do wrong because there is and it's it's the unions and it's qualified immunity at yeah, least sure. and, and there could be sure. more there's always sure. something systemically wrong with government but we're getting near the end of our time and okay. so uh, one of the things i wanted to bring up we have our knucklehead noise patrol here at the end and something silly that somebody said out there in the public that we can all laugh about at the end or maybe get worked up about at the very least uh tammy morales a city seattle city councilwoman in the heart of all of this rioting and looting that's happening in uh, in Seattle, uh, was quoted as saying in the Seattle City Council online meeting that, uh, but what I don't want to hear is for our constituents to be told to be civil, not to be reactionary, to be told looting doesn't solve anything. So, I mean, I, I you know, what, <laughs> <laughs> what can you say when your government officials are telling you, hey, don't don't tell people not to loot? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you guys got any thoughts on that? <laughs> I hope they loot her house. <laughs> you know, there's, there, I think we run out of time, so I really, I really can't tell this story, but there's a very interesting story about an NBA player in Los Angeles that I would like to tell. Maybe we'll tell it in the next in the next um, in the next episode. A very interesting story along these very same lines. Well, you know what? Let's hold it for this, and we can uh, we can have a, a little bit of overtime, and we can we can go into that. So, uh, uh, this has okay. uh, been the end of your uh, Libertarian Counterpoint show. And we are uh, now going to go into overtime. So uh, we don't seem to have any comments yet. I'm not aware of, but still, let's let's hear the end of Leon's story for those of you who are still listening. Uh, okay. So you were talking. You were talking about the, this 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 knucklehead of <laughs> this woman. Anyway, so I don't know if you know who J.R. Smith is. He's an NBA player. Um, he's not not a big superstar, but somebody of of some worth. He have, he have had a long career in the NBA. So J.R. Smith now, of course, you know he decided to go and you know be part of the whole protests and you know be out there and be sure that he's in fully support of all of them and all his good stuff and things. But Mr. Smith drives a very nice truck. He is there out there protesting with these guys. Someone decides to take a brick or a rock or something and smash one of his windows. Now, you would think if Mr. Smith, who was fully aware that these people are looting and doing all sorts of things out there, and if he was all in all agreement with all of their actions, you would think he would say, okay, that's cool. No, it was not cool with Mr. Smith. He jumped out of his truck and he started to beat up the guy who was much smaller than him. We have him on video doing this. He may end up in trouble for this. Hmm. But this is the kind of hypocrisy we see. You all have, it's okay when these people are looting and destroying other people's property. But when they come to mine, no, 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 no. You can't do that. 
You kind so of JR, so Leon J.R. Smith is on record as supporting the looters then or well I don't know if he's on record but he was out okay. there with them he was out yeah, there with them you know these people were looting like that. and that kind of stuff okay. Okay, so he wasn't just protesting. <laughs> I, I just, I, you know, because well, one of the things, there's been a conflation of, uh, you know, a little bit of, it's where to draw the line between the protesters and the looters. And to me, anybody yes. who's clearly, you know, uh, attacking other people out there and, and attacking their businesses, they're looters and rioters, and they shouldn't be given any of the, uh, you know, protections of that we afford, you know, uh, freedom of speech and and all that. I mean, they are essentially people who are breaking the law. But but uh, you know, in the case of the J.R. Smith, I did see that video, by the way. <laughs> and, but I had no idea. I had no idea what his views were on the protest or the riot. I was just you know you know happy to see somebody standing up to a looter. <laughs> 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 and he, so he, he was good up and he was the other guy down. with them. He was out there with them. It's not to say like he was just okay. passing by or anything okay. like that. He was out there with them. Okay. Now and I'm not now. saying he was taking part in the looting or anything like that, but he was out there with them, knowing what these people are doing. Okay. Yeah. And now you know the rest of the story. <laughs>